Today's video got another gameplay for you here. We are in uh, Head to Head Seasons, Rock and Stone Legend Division, and uh, just going to be talking through some things uh, that we've been doing defensively and uh, offensively. If you guys want to get my full ebooks, they are on the Patreon. You can get that by uh, joining the Patreon for just 10 bucks. It gets you access to literally everything over there, all of our offensive and defensive ebooks. I feel really good on the game right now. I feel like we're kind of figuring out some stuff. They actually just patched the fatigue glitch, which I'm thankful for. Um, I, I was really, really not liking the fatigue glitch. So in dollar... One of the best things, in my opinion, to do, one of the best base defenses, and we talk about this in the Patreon, we talk about this on our YouTube channel, we have a video that actually breaks this down, but one of the best things, uh, in my opinion, that you can do on, on defense right now is this free safety zone blitz, just back off the slot corner, put him in a hard flat, and um, as you can see, I mean, it just absolutely screams, you're going to get a lot of wins out of this. Now, one of the things that I've actually been doing uh, defensively, and it's kind of a change. Kind of all year, what we've kind of seen, especially when Deep Out Zone KO became pretty meta uh, in October. As I get a, it's just super slow on his reads, I guess. Um, but anyway, as we, when we got Deep Out Zone KO in October, one of the things that we started doing was basically baseline pressing those outside quarters because they would, they would do a really good job against outside corner routes, and they would do a really good job against crossing routes and things like that. One of the things that I'm starting to notice, especially just as you see a lot more people audible, audible from bunch to trips or from tight um, or a bunch strong to trips, one of the things that I've been doing is I've actually been unbased aligning my defenses against spread formations. Because if you think about it, they're already spread out there, like they're already kind of out in the area. And it's actually made a big difference for me. I feel like my defense has gotten a thousand times better with that one little change. Sometimes it's just little things like that that you just don't think about or maybe you just experiment with in a head-to-head -head game and it just takes your game to the next level. So I've been doing that and uh, it's been going really well. If he runs more stack wide flex, you'll see uh, kind of just different formations. Basically what I've been doing, I'm going to update the ebook with this, but essentially what it kind of boils down to is we've been man aligning against trips, default alignment against any spread out formation, and then base align against any compression formation. I feel like that's kind of the best way to play. If you think about the way the blitzes are working in this game, really the main meta blitz and really the best blitz and the most effective blitz and the blitz that everybody should be running is the four man A gap at a dollar. It's the best blitz in the game. It's the best bang for your buck from a pressure perspective. You could do the most out of it from a coverage perspective. And so if we're going to kind of build around that basic of a blitzing concept, you don't have to have the slot corners near the line of scrimmage to do that. I'd actually argue that they, it, the blitz works better if they're, if they're not. So uh, anyway, just some thoughts on that. You can take it or leave it, but that's kind of what I've been doing defensively. Uh, just messing around with different alignments against different stuff. Like against this, I would totally want to be base aligned. So you see here, use the crosser. And, um, yeah, that's what we're doing defensively. Offensively, I'm still in colds. I feel like I'm terrible in colds. I'm just not – I just I, – I love the offense. It's really – it's probably the best offense in this game. So, you see right here, he's going to come out in doubles. So, check the alignment here on the outside. So, if you see here, I actually don't think you have to um, back off the slot corner when you're playing a formation like this. Uh, you might. You could. We will. But, anyway. So back to what I was talking about with Colts. I'm just really bad in Colts. I think, but really honestly, when you when you're learning a new offense, and I'm not really learning it, but I'm learning like the execution of it. Like I've known the plays for a while. I was running it at the beginning of the year, but I just really like really like Bunch Strong. So I might go back to Bunch Strong. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, what I was going to say about kind of learning a new scheme and all that stuff. When you're learning a new offense or a new defense, whatever it is, you have to put a lot of reps into the game to actually like understand, okay, this is this is what actually stops my power play. This is what actually stops my counter play. This is how I can match or uh, can get my reads down. Because really, honestly, offense is reads and defense is adjustments. If you really boil it down to what it is in terms of an execution perspective, Offense comes down to are you able to read the defense properly? Are you able to consistently read the defense and hit the open receiver? Defense, and, and to a degree a little bit of play calling there, but that's more like scheme and that's more you know what we do on the Patreon and how we teach you guys like, okay, these routes are what work. These coverage adjustments are what work. And really it just comes down to like decision making, knowing when to do that defensively and then also offensively being decisive and being consistent with your reads. So a lot of it is you have to learn how to make quick decisions, be decisive. Here he's going to come out and try Y flex. So we're going to go to this man alignment. And uh, I really like this defense against trips. We'll see. I feel like this four man blitz is still pretty good against trips. 
But I don't know that it's better against trips because of the play action blocking. Play action blocking just has historically, at least over the course of the last, as long as next gen, next gen Madden has been a thing, and, and, and it's been a thing in previous Maddens, but especially since next gen Madden became popular, play action blocking really was like, um, really is one of the kind of like m- simple ways that you can block a lot of blitzes. It really just kind of dumbs out a lot of pressures. Well, let's see if I can throw this touchdown, branch. I don't know who that is, Mr. Or is that Banks? I don't know. I can't read. All right. So, like I said, offensively, it comes down to massing your reads. So, one of the things that I like to do, and this is something I actually haven't really done with the Colts playbook. It might be why I'm so uncomfortable with it. But one of the things that I've liked to do for years in Madden is if I'm ever trying to learn something, um, one of the things – I'm trying to remember the framework for it. But essentially, if you think about, like, when you're trying to learn a skill – because Madden is Madden is 100%, in my opinion, a skill. Like there's knowledge, and then there's the execution of knowledge. And I think that, I think that is the, I guess, the differentiation of a skill. So one of the things that I'm trying to do, as I'm playing the game, is I'm trying to understand. Okay, how do I actually learn, really making really good adjustments, or how do I really learn um, making really good reads? And one of the best ways to do that is high level of repetition, and actually pre-snap, okay, I've got to think, what are my actual reads? What are my progressions? Then I've got to execute that post-snap. And I think I find one of the best ways to do that is to go into a game, whenever you're trying to learn a play, um, if you ever get an ebook or if you're ever trying to learn an offense or anything, what I really recommend is go into a game and basically just run that play for as long as you can, maybe one other basic play off of that, like a power and a counter play. But really just try to really master like one or two plays at a time because if you if you try to master five plays, oftentimes those five plays are going to go in five different directions. And so it's hard for your brain, in my opinion, to actually be able to keep up with everything that you're doing. So uh, you can't execute it if you do it that way. That's just my opinion. You can take it or leave it. I've been doing that since I started playing Madden. Um, really back in 2012, I was doing that out of the West Coast playbook. And uh, it was actually pretty deep. That's probably a, in terms of like, like my best level of offense. That was probably like my peak level because I had literally just played so much with that playbook. I had just figured out how to solve problems. One of the things I really like this guy, um, Coach Vass. I think his name is Coach Vasser. Chris Chris Vasser. I'm pretty sure is his name. Uh, but he has a podcast, and he actually is a. He used to be a coach, and now he's like almost like a consultant. It seems like. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at Bo Jackson over there on the left. So against a bunch of flex, I need a baseline. Sometimes you can get to talking and you're not really paying attention to what you're doing. But anyway, so this guy, he has a podcast and it's it's called the Make Defense Great Again pod- podcast. Really good podcast. And one of the things that he says, um, he actually did some film. When I was trying to get into match coverage, he was kind of my main one of the one of the main resources that I used. Uh, for learning match coverage, him and Cody Alexander. I think those are two really good. If you want like real NFL uh, stuff, they're pretty good. But anyway, one of the things that he said that really stuck out to me is the, the he had to make basically make a decision when he was uh, a defensive coordinator, what defense he wanted to master, what defense he wanted to run. And he kind of had two decisions. I want to say it was between the TCU system and the – I don't know what the other one was. It could have been Iowa State, but I can't remember. But anyway, uh, the TCU 425 defense, and then it was another one. And I, I said I just can't remember the other one off the top of my head. But anyway, he had these two systems. And he ended up choosing TCU. And the main reason why he decided to do that is just because he knew how to fix problems that were naturally created within the defense from just repetition and from just learning over time. And, and again, the if this, then that, that is inevitably football. You have to be able to solve problems. That's kind of what adjustments are in, in defense. And honestly, to a degree, offense, like you have to be able to solve problems within your offense, within your playbook, within your play even. So how can you do that? in your defense that's part of what makes dollar so effective is not only has it been probably the best defense in the game for years but it's also been um you know it's it's been really good from a a blitzing perspective but really what makes dollar i think special is you could just create a lot of different you could do a lot from the coverage aspect of it like 
you could you can just there's so much you can do from adjustments. You have three players that you can cross man. The one weakness of Dollar, I would say, is they took away the slot cross manning system. I wish that was still in the game. It unfortunately isn't. There are ways in which you can actually create cross manning concepts. I wouldn't say you necessarily need them, um, and especially in this year's game. I always miss that throw. Um, how many times have you guys seen a video from me and I just com I just completely throw that too far to the right? But anyway, so you've got to have you got to be able to understand like okay, these are some problems that I can solve with my adjustments. And so when you start to really think through your defense and and to a degree your offense, you want to basically ask yourself like, can this defense solve the problem that I'm facing? And the only way that I think you do that is through either a watching other people play. B, playing yourself, or C, getting into practice mode and testing it, right? What we try to do in the Patreon with our eBooks is we take a lot of the testing out of it for you because we're able to say, okay, this, we've tested all of these things. These are the best possible um, solutions for you. We're going to do some off-meta kind of fun stuff uh, later on uh, this month, starting this month for you guys. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of the idea is like the – can you solve the problems that you're facing? If you can solve the problems, that's how you know you kind of found something that's pretty effective. Meta, if you think about the meta in the game, and I actually don't know where that word comes from. I, when I think of meta, I think of meta analysis, like in research, but um, I just don't know where we ever, what, why gaming started using the word meta, because meta was, me, the word meta wasn't used, like back when I first started doing YouTube. But now it's super common and pretty much what everybody believes or like the standard definition of the word meta from what um, from what I hear from like Madden community is the meta is basically just like whatever's the most popular stuff. Um, not necessarily the most effective, I would say. Um, it's just whatever's the most popular. It's what you see the most. It's most common stuff. Now, you could make an argument that the most common stuff is the most effective stuff, but I don't think it one to one means that. We we'll get out here with Andrew Lux since he went off sides. Let's see if I can get out. I don't think uh, meta actually means the most effective. At first, I thought it did, but I don't know. Um, so, anyways, so if you think about the meta in Madden, especially this year, you basically have bunch strong offset, bunch offset, bunch strong nasty, trips tight in offset. Trips tied in offset week, right? It's typically some version of those things, right? So basically three by one formations. And the weakness of three by one formations oftentimes is, or one of the best tactics, I guess, that you can use to kind of counter is really what this guy's doing, like running man coverage. The problem is in this year's game, just the way the game works, um, it's really hard to play man coverage at a high level because there's so many routes in this game that can beat man coverage. And even though corner routes, like last year, corner routes were so much better, I think, than they are this year. I would say they're much, corner routes are really good for zone this year. I would say against man to man, though, like corner routes are not 100% consistent. They're kind of, even C routes um, are relatively inconsistent, in my opinion, against man coverage. Really, any outbreaking pattern, whether it be a C route, a corner route, any kind of uh, a deep out route, they're fairly inconsistent in terms of their ability to be able to attack man-to-man -man coverages. So, um, so because of that, the routes that win against man coverage, though, is really almost anything that's in-breaking. So if you think about it, like the wide trail, uh, the tight end trail route is still fairly good against man, but really the best route, in my opinion, against man coverage this year, any kind of short post route or any kind of um, – uh, drag route, and you can put those two kind of routes together. Obviously, running back routes this year are really, really good. Uh, running back wheel routes are so good this year. So that's another uh, another little thing that you have going for you. So if you think about that, there's a lot of just different ways to beat man coverage, and then you can basically almost take your man beaters and uh, turn them into zone beaters because those routes – together complement very very well also within just kind of the basic overarching theme of like the spacing of route combos the one thing i have kind of become much more i don't know i'm just surprised as i as i kind of look at this game and and take it for what it is the the, the, the thing about double corners that is so good look at this i can do double corners out of double post why wouldn't you he's gonna run to the right left <laughs> 
Man, I don't know, man. Every time I turn on the camera to record, I just literally play people that <laughs> I don't know. They just they're just doing random stuff. But anyways, if you think about offense and the corner routes, the other thing, a little bit of a factor into the game, and this is where I think man coverage to a degree has a play. I don't know if it has play as like a full blown meta, but like manning up specific players within zone. When you man up, like let's say you're playing bunch and they run a streak corner flat combo to the right. If you man up the outside receiver that's on the streak, because it bumps him so bad and because of the way just the game interacts with the movement system that they have in this game, the corner route oftentimes will get bumped off his route and he won't get open. And so it's stuff like that that you can kind of do defensively to kind of just create little, I don't know, just muddy stuff up right muddy stuff up so i think any kind of press any kind of chucks you can get i actually think in this year's game they're super super effective so that's another little tip and and i think defensively you want to be you know physical uh with your with your defense but i don't know what do you guys think on that i i just been the more i look at this game and just take it for what it is and really take especially this year but also last year we'll see if this guy's actually going to finally be done um, dollar just becomes the clear cut answer for almost everything. And I don't know exactly why. I just think it's because it gives you the most amount of things you can actually do because you can't really do certain things out of, uh, one of the other things we haven't even talked about. And, and we did talk about a little bit in the beginning alignment in a, is one of the most critical elements of defense. You have to align your defense properly so that you actually have leverage points and I talked about this in the in previous video, but if you think about it, defense offenses are always with whatever an off everything an offense does is essentially trying to create space to get players to get players in space, right? To get to get routes in space, to get receiving threats in space. They're trying to create open space to be able to, um, you know, obviously run to the end zone. Defense, if you think about it conceptually, is really just trying to do the opposite of that. They're trying to stop the offense from scoring and in essence they're trying to constrain space one of the ways that they do that is through creating leverage points within the defense so some stuff to chew on this guy's out of here thanks for watching the video hope you enjoyed it if you want to get all of our ebooks on this stuff it's in the patreon link is down in the description